Here is the first half of a two-part tutorial on how to make an animated GIF using After Effects. So, here is After Effects, and when you open it, it might look like this, depends on your settings, but uh, what I recommend is going to Workspace and choosing Essentials. If you're not sure what things are, it just gives you the things you need and not too much more, and helps simplify things a bit. So, things will become clearer as I go on, but... Um, First of all, let me just show you what we're going to do. So I'll switch to the Finder, and here is a really simple GIF that I made earlier on, and we're going to be making something like this. So this just demonstrates some very simple keyframing techniques and some making shapes, that kind of thing, and there you go. Now, the first thing I do when I make an After Effects project is just make a folder. Put everything in a folder, then the various bits and pieces stay together. Then if you move between computers, you pick up the folder and move that, not the file. If you move files around, don't move the other bits and bobs with it, it can break your project. So, first thing I'm going to do is say save as and just save my uh, file in this folder and that uh, just means that I can just hit save at any point and uh, and it's going to save this as I go and if something crashes then I'm safe. So I recommend doing that with After Effects. So first thing to do in After Effects is make a new composition. Now the composition is uh, your video basically. You can have multiple compositions in one project but this is a thing that will output as a video and eventually a GIF. So this is a pretty default um, thing. It's a uh, uh, 1080p 25 frame per second video which is what you do for an HDTV. Now we're going to do something more, more custom so we're not going to use this. Now I'm going to turn off lock aspect ratio and I'm going to change my size to 540 by 540 pixels. Now that is the default upload size for Tumblr for GIFs. That's why I'm using that pixel size. Now a lot of other social media things have their own particular size they like so you just need to pay attention to that. This is nice and small uh, but it's big enough and it's going to look fine for this. And I'm going to make it 24 frames per second. Again, you can have anything you want here. The, the lower the frame rate, the lower the file size. But 24 is a really good number. It divides into lots of things. If you're doing loops, you can do two little loops in 24 at 12 frames. Or you can do three loops, eight frames each. Or four loops at six frames each, and so on. So this number divides so easily. It's just a really handy frame rate. So duration, three seconds. That's what I'm going to do. That's a nice little number for a quick animated GIF. And uh, if you don't know what this is, you've got hours, minutes, seconds, and then frames. And do a bit of Googling on that if you're not sure. And you can choose a background color. I'm going to stick with this color here. And that's my composition setup. So you can see I've got a yellow background and it's square. And down here, you've got various things you can look at. Do a bit of Googling to find out what they are. But if you hover over them, it just gives you a bit of information. Um, most of it's fairly self-explanatory. Just play around and experiment and see what happens. So that's your sort of area for your video. Down here is your timeline. So um, you can expand and contract different things in here. So these little buttons are useful. And this is your playhead, which will show you where you are in your timeline. And let's just dive in. So I'm going to animate a rounded rectangle. You can choose your color and your stroke up here. I've turned the stroke off by clicking on this blue text, and you can change some settings here. So first thing to do is draw a square and I want, I want it in the center so let's use my align palette nice easy way of getting it to the center and there's one other thing that's going to come into effect later but this is your anchor point here that's the point around which things spin so I'm going to move my anchor point to the center and there's various ways of doing that really accurately so zoom in um, now as you see it already snapped to the center when I when I did that, so let's just drag it into the center again. Um, that's really useful to have that in the center, uh, and, and you'll see why later on. Um, if you're interested in getting this dead center, do a bit of Googling on anchor point and changing it, and there are ways of, of doing it perfectly, but to roughly move it around, you can use this tool, and that's really, that's really useful. So anyway, now we have a square, and it's in the center of our screen. So to move things in After Effects, we uh, use things called keyframes. And if you look down under your shape layer, so when I, when I drew that, I made a new shape layer, you've got different properties here. And let's open Transform, and you can see various things that are going to be useful for us. So I want to animate position. I want it to move on the screen like we saw. So if I click on the stopwatch here, 
that is going to start recording position. So you can see it's made a keyframe here. Uh, these, these little diamonds are keyframes, and it made that automatically when I turned that on. If I move my playhead forward and just make sure I have the arrow tool, I'll just click and drag that somewhere, drag it over here. After Effects animates it automatically. It animates between keyframes. So your keyframes are your end points of any animation. And if I hit space, it will play. And you can see the animation so far. Now, when you're previewing, here's a quick tip if you're using a laptop, you can also hit Control Zero. That will also play it. Now, Control Zero does something called a RAM preview. If you've got a full size keyboard, if you're on a desktop, it's the zero on your number pad, not the zero at the top of your, of your letters, but the one on the right hand side. But laptops tend not to have that, so control zero, um, RAM previous. That's a more reliable way of playing back. If your computer's nice and quick, then you can just use space, um, and that would, that would also play it. Um, do a bit of Googling about RAM previewing. There's more to it than that, especially if you've got sound, but that's, that's for later. Um, so that's how you make an animation. And, this keyframing business is basically um, the be-all and end-all of After Effects animations, and by combining that with various other things, you can do practically anything. So I'm going to delete that keyframe because I don't want it there. So the way to delete, or just go back to where you were, is just select the keyframe. It will turn blue. Um, older versions of After Effects go yellow or orange. Just hit the delete key, and it goes. And now we're back to not having anything animated. I want it to come on the screen and be on the screen here. So I can manually make a keyframe by clicking on this, this little diamond uh, in line with my position, that makes a new keyframe. Nothing's happening yet because I've got two keyframes with it in the same position, but that means I can go back to the beginning one and then just click and drag this off screen. If I hold down shift, it keeps it horizontal as well. So let's hit space and it comes on the screen. That's great, that's what I want. Now the movement's a bit clunky, it just goes dunk and stop, so let's um, make that smoother. There's a really easy way of doing that. Just select my keyframes like this, you can either drag or you can click and then hold down shift and click another one. If I right click on them, I can go keyframe assistant, easy ease. You can also do that up in the menus here, but some of these right click menus are useful. Now easy ease does a bit of acceleration and deceleration. So you just see it decelerates towards the end. That's really useful. So that's a bit more pleasant. Now let's do something different. So let's wait until here. We'll let it pause for a minute and let's look at something else. So under here, I've got my contents, my shape layer, and there's my rectangle, my rectangle path, roundness. And I want to affect the roundness. So again, it's got a stopwatch. If I click on that stopwatch, I can start to animate the roundness. Now let's keep that as it is, but let's go half a second on and turn this number up. So there's two ways of affecting a number. You can either click and drag, or you can just click and type. You could type a number like 100 and then hit return. Now I'm gonna click and drag and make it the maximum roundness. Well, that's actually enough because it depends on the size of your thing. But if you go up to there, you can see it's become a circle. So there's a really easy way of making squares into circles. You just use a rounded rectangle and affect the roundness. So that's a nice bit of animation. That's kind of fun. Um, let's wait a bit more. Um, actually, you know, what I'll do is I'm, I'm going to rotate it. I want this to rotate before it becomes a circle because I won't see it rotate if it's a circle. So I want it to become a circle a bit later. I want to I do some rotation first. So if I want to move this animation along in time, and make it happen down here somewhere, I can click and drag these two keyframes and just drag them along. So it's gonna happen a bit later, so there's gonna be more of a pause. So look, it's gonna come on, wait, and then do that. Now in this first bit of time, I'm gonna do some rotation. So where's rotation? There's rotation down here under the rectangle itself, or I can rotate the shape layer. Now the reason there's two lots of rotations, you can have multiple shapes in one shape layer. So there's, you'll often see this in After Effects, there's different places you can transform things. I'm going to do it in the main transform panel, just keep things simpler for now, but have a play with that. So uh, let's, let's rotate that here. So I'm going to start there, click on the stopwatch, that makes a keyframe. I'm going to go about half a second on, and I want to rotate it 90 degrees. So you can click and drag, 
I don't want it to be exactly 90, so let's just click and type 90. And then let's look at it so far. That's uh, that's that's kind of fine for now. Um, I might move this on to this precise point here. Um, maybe I'll overlap these two. So let's um, let's make it rotate slower. So to rotate slower, you move keyframes apart. The further away keyframes are, the slower things happen. So I'm going to overlap the rotation and the bit where I make it a circle here. So let's click on this and do that. Now you can see. I've got some overlap between these keyframes, so it's going to start to become a circle as it rotates. Which you know, is going to look interesting, so let's just do that. And then, now it's done this, I want to make it go off the screen. If it goes off the screen, it started off the screen. If it ends off the screen, it's just going to loop well. It's um, If you're doing loops, make your beginning and end the same, then the loop will be seamless. So let's move it off the screen. That's a position thing again. So we've got these position points. now. If I just move off the screen now, it's going to start to move here because that's my last keyframe. So I'll show you. Uh, position's already got a stopwatch on. If I click that again, I'll lose all my keyframes. So don't click it again. All you have to do is just move. So let's move this off the screen. That's what I want to do. Um, now the problem is that my last keyframe was there. And I rotated it, which changes its center. So that means it then starts to move up there, and that's really screwed things up. Now, this is how to get around that. What you want to do before you move it is make a new keyframe here by clicking this button. And what that says is that keyframe is no different from this keyframe. So that's basically saying stay in the same place for all this time. And now, at this point, I can then go to the end and just drag this up. And it will move from that point. So this button to make a new keyframe is very useful because it basically allows you to make a point to start from. And it also tells After Effects that between these two points, nothing's happening because that keyframe and the end keyframe are identical. So let's hit space and watch the full thing. I'll drag that back to the beginning. There you go. Now that's a really easy looping animation. And from here I can export it and start making a GIF. And exporting and doing the rest of it I'll show you in the next video.